Hello, welcome, good afternoon, and today's edition, afternoon edition, is a very wonderful one that we are going to take this afternoon. And just as many Nigerians are expected, if you know the situation in the country, definitely there are so many issues um, that is going on, most especially when it comes to the issue of um, inflation in terms of um, the cost of foods in the market. And um, just a few days to the Sandler celebration, so many persons are agitating that um, with this rising cost of food, how will they even celebrate um, the Edel um, Kabir um, period? And as a result of that, we are going to be having a conversation with one of the youth activists when it comes to the issue of um, food in the nation, in person of um, Mr. Um, the national president of the Ima Youth Farmers Association, in person of Mr. Hamad Yusuf, and who will be joining us um, on the program this afternoon to talk more about the rate at which we are having this inflation in the country and how can we put a stop to this or how can we um, regulate um, the price of foods in the market. So these are critical time for many Nigerians, most especially when you don't have much at hand, then how much will you be able to get back home for your family? For some days now, people have, been also, people have also raised so many questions with respect to the cost of even the perishables. Tomatoes used to be very, very cheap. Um, pepper used to be very, very cheap. That's chili. For some of us, some will know it to be that way. And even onion. But now with this rising cost of vegetables that we use almost daily, um, you discover that um, it is becoming difficult for Nigerians to actually feed themselves. Some of us have said that um, we need to go back home in terms of trying as much as possible to see that, yes, behind our houses we have gardens, small gardens where we can make all this available. But will that be enough? Will it be sustainable? Um, for the nation. If we all look at all that is happening, most especially with the coming of um, the insecurity um, in the country, but then we are very, very hopeful that um, things will definitely um, get back to stand as we all expected. So we'll be going on a very short break now, and when we return, we start up with a conversation with this group of persons uh, who are also looking forward to a nation where we have abundance of food. We are a nation blessed with people of diverse cultures, religions, languages and opinions. It is ironic that we are now being ripped apart by our greatest strength, our diversity. We have allowed intolerance, insensitivity, bigotry and nepotism to blind our vision of the greatness we can achieve working together as one. We may not have the same culture, nor religion, nor language, but we all belong to the same nation by the divine will of God. We did not choose to be Nigerians. Nigeria chose us. This nation is our divine heritage, and if we open our eyes, we would realize that what divides us pales in comparison to what unites us. And by the comparison and conciliation of our differences, we will grow until our differences disappear. Our unity cannot be willed by mere declarations, nor do we get unity by ignoring the questions that beg for answers. We must celebrate our diversity and debate our differences without fracturing our unity. Our strength is not in our numbers, but in our unity. Because even the weak become strong when united. Nigeria Unite. This message is brought to you by Abuja Broadcasting Corporation, owners and operators of ASO Radio 93.5 FM Abuja, ASO Television, DSTV, Channel 392, Star Times Terrestrial, Channel 127, Free TV, Channel 507, People's TV, Channel 285, and UHF, Channel 38. Mr. President, last Saturday, the country which I have the honor to represent, the Federation of Nigeria, became independent and assumed the rights and the responsibilities of a sovereign state. Today, Nigeria has been admitted 
into the United Nations organization and assume still more responsibilities. I wish to make our position plain beyond any matter of doubt as regards the African continent. We in Nigeria appreciate the advantages which is the size of our country and of its population give us, but we have absolutely no aggressive intentions. We shall never impose ourselves upon any other country and shall treat every African territory, big or small, as our equal, because we honestly feel that it is only on that basis of equality that peace can be maintained in our continent. We in Nigeria are a populous country. There are about 40 million of us, and our territory is relatively large. We are willing to learn before we rush into the field of international politics. But we are totally unwilling to be diverted from the ideals which we think true. That is the reason, Mr. President, why we in Nigeria shall not be found to align ourselves as a matter of routine with any particular bloc. Indeed, I hate the very idea of blocks existing at all in the United Nations. It seems to me to be a contradiction in terms. When we hear the world crying out for peace, we may receive the inspiration to deal with these intractable problems and be able really to devote all our resources to the advancement of mankind by applying those eternal truths which will inevitably persist long after we ourselves are utterly forgotten. Thank you, Mr. President. Welcome back from that short break. And just before the break, I did inform you that today we are having the national president of the Imma Youth Farmers Association of Nigeria, um, a key personality with respect to how they look at issues that has to do with agriculture and how they can be able to like put more effort to see that, yes, we have enough food in the country. So, Mr. President, good afternoon, Mr. Ahmed Yusuf. Good afternoon, Nigeria. It's nice having you today on the program. I'm looking forward to issues that is surrounding us today. Um, for you as a farmer, I don't know if you are feeling the brunt of what it means for Nigerians to, um, to actually come out and say the rising cost of food is so weakening for us as Nigerians. But for you as a farmer, how do you feel when you hear that some um, people actually complain that we don't have enough food and the cost of the ones we have are expensive? I feel very, very bad. I wasn't happy with, uh, with that because that is not our plan in the country most especially when it comes to youth. Youth, we are the heart of the nation. We are the heart of the country. We are the leader of tomorrow. And uh, we also expect we youth today to also try as much as possible to see how we can be able to sustain our fathers, our mothers in the house, because we are the one to give them now. They are not supposed to be giving to us. In, the, in, in their past for, their, for in our age, I think uh, they have done their best. They have tried all what they can do. Now it is now our turn. Why now we are buying food at the cost rate? We are, we, in fact, uh, it's, it, is not, it is not even advisable at all, at all, at all, at all, because a poor man cannot, cannot even 12 square me, mm. poor man cannot even get it daily now, as I'm talking to you. If you look at the tomato in the market now, it's, it, 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 is, it is unbearable. It is not easy at all. We farmers, as you, as, as you said, we farmers, we, we feel it even more than the people outside there. Because uh, let us mean if I'm, to buy, if I'm to buy fertilizer before at the rate of 20,000 naira, and now I'm buying it at the rate of 60, 70,000 naira, it's affecting me, seriously. And then it is not even all farmers can go to, to the farm now because the manpower is not there. Right now, you know, before we, what we do, we, 
we it is it is not like mechanization but now we are talking of mechanization would the government have to come into rescue for the farmer the government have to come to help the farmers for those things but those things are not there yet so it is not it is not easy for us all of us in the in the country not just only the farmers not just only the the other people out there everybody 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 is feeling the heat Okay, now, now that you've also attested to the fact that we're all feeling the heat, and um, for you, you, you started by actually establishing the fact that um, we have to feed those that, has fed, those that had fed us in the past, that's our parents, um, who are a bit elderly now, it's difficult for them to have that um, strength to go back to farm, to make sure that there's a food available for all Nigerians. Um, but then, as a youth organization, a youthful farmers organization, um, how will you now bring the youth together? In such a way that yes, the youth will recognize the importance of them going to farm um, for them to be for us to be able to have bumper harvest for the nation, and so that the cost of food will be better for us as a nation. So, what are you doing in terms of how to get people together to see that yes, we have um, enough youth in the farm for productive activities? Yes, as a as an association, we are we are, we are trying to as much as possible to put that in order. We have be encouraged our youth from the grassroots because it has to do with the grassroots. The man in the city center, he cannot farm in the city center. He have to go to the village. He have to go to the forest and others to get it done. So we have be encouraged our youth. <coughs> you know, um, a lot of youth doesn't take farmers in, as a priority what we are supposed to, to go in. Farm is a is a something that it don't even affect what you are doing. Maybe you are a, you are, you are a mechanic or office holder or whatsoever. You can still put things in order. Unlike before, when from the primary to secondary, you will be seeing when you go to when you go to those places, you see even teachers. There must be day that they put those children in order. To for them to go to the farm but today those things are not there so they have discouraged people for going to farm we need to encourage ourselves we need to let ourselves know what is the evil this thing is all about we need to feed ourselves we should not be expecting people from outside we import this we import that no that is not what we're supposed to be thinking of we should be able to farm what we can eat. We should be able to feed ourselves in the nation. We should be able to, to cultivate what to even after we get our own, we can still even export out to our neighboring country and others. This is our plan. Our plan is that we are encourage the youth to come out in massive in this government, even without even the government in it. There is still many ways we can go into it. Today, if you invest like 500,000 into one hectare, or let us mean you invest 500,000 to cultivate maybe like rice, you end up make no less than 1.5 million naira by the time you take it to the market. So some of those things, and we are also asking the government to put things in order in the sense that there will be like a price control in the market. It is not unlike when I just get my crock outside there, I will just put the money and this man is selling his own at the rate of 20,000 naira. So if I feel I can sell my own at the rate of 25,000 naira or 30,000, no, it should not be like that. We should try as much as possible. We, you, let us help ourselves. We need to help ourselves. We are not helping anybody here. We are helping ourselves. Because without food on your table, you know what it is. Without food in your house, you know what it is. And when you don't have food, let us know now, are we now asking our father to go to the farm and now farm for us today and bring the food to the to, to, to table for us? No, we are supposed now as a youth, we are supposed to do that. In this system, that is not what is happening in this country. Before we have something like Operation Feed the Nation with the government that be looking after those things. But those things are no more existing now. So we need to know how we can be able as a leader of tomorrow, as if we are not even leader of tomorrow, we are leader of today. Yeah. 
We are leaders of today now. So we are encouraging ourselves as a youth from the grassroots. We now, we have been going around from village, local, traditional rulers and others to make sure that those are our people from the rural area we boost their energy for farming in the sense that there will be help to make sure that maybe something like those input we get it for some of them so that when they when they cultivate whatever they're going to cultivate maybe rice maize cassava and so on we, we by the time you do it we now have the central market that we will buy those items from you it will not be like before you just take your goods to the market and sell it at the rate you want no when we buy it from you we will now deregulate it for the government for the people so that you can, it will be affordable instead of buying rice at the rate of seventy thousand eighty thousand you'll be seeing that we get rice to buy at the rate of fifty thousand forty thousand naira fifty kg those are this is one of the plan that we are bringing in and we want we also want to educate our young one so that it will not be like our time our young one right from the primary school the importance of the farm the importance of the farmers the importance of the cultivation of those crops very very important we don't have food in the we don't have food in our market we don't have food in our warehouse we don't have food in anywhere that is why you see the inflation is going up and up and up just imagine tomato you are buying one basket of tomato today at the rate of 150,000 naira. why why is it like this is it that um, because like the issue of um, these perishables most especially tomato as people have complained so much and now you know we have um sandler just in few days um from now that's on sunday expectedly so if you look at the situation of things now and you start asking yourself because these are questions we are actually supposed to ask you guys yes. um, you are the president of the ima association youth association of farmers and now you are now seeing things happening this way so you you earlier stated that um, the cost of um, the input which is the fertilizer has tripled or has doubled with respect to the last year farming season and you look at situations like this are there no better ways that you farmers can help to see that yes despite the cost of fertilizer you have an understanding and anyway with the government so that they supply you a subsidized fertilizer in such a way that yes at the end of the day your produce can be sell um, in the market at a very affordable price yes you see when, when you come to that the government also need to they have a, a very vital and uh, highway to play in this aspect like now like what we are talking of subsidy subsidy first subsidy first subsidy where we divide our uh, subsidy to now we need to also go into agriculture the government need to subsidize the fertilizer the chemical the seed and even the machinery for the mechanization the government need to do those things they need to put those things in order and uh, you cannot accuse this present government compared to what happened for the for the for the for the previous government that just left the office this government is just one year old in office they need a proper plan so that when the key starts and when they start this their program they start subsidizing people it will reach where they want that to go to it will not be as usual just like as a business you know maybe i mean i work in nmpc or i work in cbn i happen to have an opportunity what belong to the man in lapai in agai in uh, 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 other local government that we know that we, that is the area that we know that we are doing all this our family and others what belong to them i took it i put it inside my cloth i hold it and i did not give it to them no the government needs to also work hard so that it will reach those people somebody that has cultivated one hectare before we are now expecting him now to cultivate no less than two three four hectares so that one will also help a lot if we have like 
maybe we have we are, we are having like 2,000 metric ton of rice before annually. Now we are thinking of how we can be able to have 6,000, 7,000, 8,000, 10,000. That will help. But without doing this, the farmer also, they don't have money. They are poor. They don't have the money. They don't have access to those inputs. They don't have access to those facilities. So it, it will be very difficult for them to also get it right. But if the government has put in something in order, maybe there is a sub, there is there, there is maybe there is a committee which is shared by somebody that will look after those things. And we farmers, we also need to tell ourselves the truth. Not for me. You give me those items to go to farm, and I sold those items. I sell it to somebody else. From I, I stay in a in a in a in a in a, in a, in a local government before in one village. I relocate to the to the state uh, headquarters, or I relocate to Abuja. I started looking for 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 for, for, for national cake also to share. If I have put in that money or that input into farm aspect let us I mean i don't have money before like i don't have maybe two hundred thousand naira before by the time you give me those uh, those input and i utilize those input and i had to have one million naira in my hand next season i don't even need to wait for the government i don't need to wait for the government and as i'm talking to you right now we are having a memorandum of understanding with some of uh, some of the uh, private firm which uh, they are provide uh, seed for us, provide fertilizer for us, provide uh, the chemical for us, some of those things, even some of the machinery for the for the for the for the for the for the farmers. They they also provide some of those things which call hard care. They, 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 those are the people that we are also looking forward to also come to rescue Nigeria from this era that we find ourselves today. Like those people now, they are provide those things for us so that we can give it to the farmer. Now we are now on the field to now bring out who are the real farmers, who has land. I will not just give you those items and I go back to my house and sleep. No, I have to also monitor what you are doing with those items. I have to also see, are you actually using those things for the right thing? Are you actually going to the farm at the right time? Do you even check those things? Are they working for you or not? Those are the things that is also very, very important for us in the farm, in the, in the, in the agri sector. We don't just take those things and give it to somebody who don't even... There are some things now today, some people, some farmers don't even know how to apply the fertilizer. You have to teach them, you have to train them, you, some of those things. It must be a something continuously for us. From we, even from the government, the government sometimes we just buy items and share it for people on the street. And no, it has to be the right person who is going to utilize this thing. And the government has the land by itself. Whether the local government, whether the state government, whether the federal government, they had the authority on the land. Look at the uh, Niger state governor. Immediately he has home office. He called all the local government chairman. He said everybody should go to a local government and get no less than 1,500 hectares of land above for farm. For mechanizing, for mechanizing farm. That every local government chairman should go and do that. If we are seeing people that have been putting things in order like this, we will not be talking of the, the cost of food items in the market and all that. Today, you cannot just go out there, maybe they say, they normally call it mama put or whatsoever they call it. That is when we poor people, we can be able to eat the cheaper food. You can't go out there now. The, the cheapest one is 1,000. We are talking of the minimum weight of 62,000 naira, which many governors say they cannot pay. So if you have, if you eat, if you want, let it even say twice in a day, you eat 1,000 in the morning, 1,000 in the evening, times 30. That's 100 and something thousand monthly. That's so 50, 
you understand yeah. that's 60,000 sorry yeah. that's 60,000 naira so you don't you don't talk of other activity that you must be using that your salary and not that so how are we going to sustain this the only way to sustain the, it is to give the the farmer most especially those association that we know those group that we know that they have passion and most especially in the youth side we should look at the youth we should bring the youth out let the youth to participate in agriculture seriously let the government to now set up some lands you can even allocate those land for some people like those like in niger in nasarawa in kogi in kaduna in plateau in kano you can get out like 5,000 hectares of land, you bring people, you take 2 hectares, you take 3 hectares, and you'll be monitoring whatever that is going on within that, those, those farms, from, from the local government to the state and down to the federal. But in this particular case that you've stated, um, like that of um, Niger State, which is a very, very good scenario with respect to how the governor um, started his program on agriculture, now, you know, all states are not the same, and not all states have the kind of fertility that other states have. And that may be difficult for everybody to be able to carry out farming at once and at the exact time. And you also know that we have change in season. The season has changed, unlike before, where you see that rain, rain just started um, just a few um, weeks ago. Uh, unlike in the past, you see that it started earlier on. But with these current challenges that you've stated, and I'm um, looking forward to what EMA Association um, is doing, if you also you also remember the fact that um, sometimes people register agricultural association with um, maybe the corporate affairs commission or with the ministry of agriculture, but these associations are not actually in reality they are not actually um, owned by agri farmers. They are owned by maybe individuals who are not actually far farming and then they siphon um, the funds that are meant for agriculture. So in this particular case, what model do you think the government need to adopt? Because sometimes this person will come and apply and say he's a farmer, but at the end of the day he's not a farmer. And you've rightly stated that some people, you give them the materials, government provides um, all, the all they need to farm. But at the end of the day, they end up selling um, those uh, materials that were provided by government. So how do we now identify the actual farmers to see that, yes, they get the best of intervention for them to be able to carry out their farming activities? Thank you. You see, on that what uh, what we like we him uh, what we have been doing before now right from the world from the unit down to the world down to the local government and the state coming to federal we have all our members now if you really want to do it where and you want to hit your target it is for you to go back to the rural area who are those who has the capacity in rural area to also bring out the farmers and talk to the farmers there who has the farmer in those places it is not within the city you have to go back to the to the down the people are the vi in the village the people in the farm let us only now you 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 register your your association do you really even have the land to farm? Do you really even have the farmers? If you say yes, the answer is yes. I have the farmers. Who are those your farmers? My farmers, they are from Nasarawa. Which area in Nasarawa? From so 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 place in Nasarawa. We have local chief there. Who we quantify? Is this person on ground here? Do he really know the farmer here? Is there any land that he acquired within farmers here? Yes, the answer is yes. Then you qualify. Okay, to before, go be, on. Be, before you move further to that, uh, we'll just go on a very short break now um, so that when we return, you tell us more on how the government will be able to actually pinpoint those he's supposed to um, carry out activities, most especially the intervention. Um, because there are several interventions, be it under this um, government or the previous, there were so many money that was given out um, by the previous government and this government has also started um, things like that and you've mentioned Niger State is also doing something like that. So we'll go on a very short break and uh, when we return uh, we continue with the conversation with the president of the IMA Association in person of um, Mr. Ahmed Yusuf uh, who is the national president of the group and also join us later 
after the reverse guy will be Abdul Karim Usman, the national secretary of the same association. We are a nation blessed with people of diverse cultures, religions, languages and opinions. It is ironic that we are now being ripped apart by our greatest strength, our diversity. We have allowed intolerance, insensitivity, bigotry and nepotism to blind our vision of the greatness we can achieve working together as one. We may not have the same culture, nor religion, nor language, but we all belong to the same nation by the divine will of God. We did not choose to be Nigerians. Nigeria chose us. This nation is our divine heritage, and if we open our eyes, we would realize that what divides us pales in comparison to what unites us. And by the comparison and conciliation of our differences, we will grow until our differences disappear. Our unity cannot be willed by mere declarations, nor do we get unity by ignoring the questions that beg for answers. We must celebrate our diversity and debate our differences without fracturing our unity. Our strength is not in our numbers, but in our unity. Because even the weak become strong when united. Nigeria unite. This message is brought to you by Abuja Broadcasting Corporation, owners and operators of ASO Radio 93.5 FM Abuja, ASO Television, DSTV, Channel 392, Star Times Terrestrial, Channel 127, Free TV, Channel 507, People's TV, Channel 285, and UHF, Channel 38. Welcome back from the break. And still with us here is Mr. Ahmed Yusuf, um, the national president of the Ima Youth Association of Farmers um, here in Nigeria. And uh, we've been discussing issues with regarding to um, feeding the nation. How do we make sure that, yes, the cost of food in the market um, reduce drastically for Nigerians to be able to feed? Because if you look at the poverty index these days, um, it is not in... Uh, it's a very, very tough one for all Nigerians. And um, definitely, if it continues this way, it will not be the best um, for us as a nation. But then, just in a few minutes, I will be joining um, the secretary of this same association to also tell us more about the activities of the association. But let me um, allow you to land on your, initial, on your previous thoughts with respect to how we can properly identify, designate these people who are the actual farmers and that they are not going to siphon um, uh, provisions of the government that were made for them to be able to use in their farm. So, uh, you see, in, in that aspect, the, gov the, 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 the executive, the legislature, the state governors, they has a, a, a very uh, good way to also play in this aspect. Because, uh, you see, the federal has tried what they can do. The state is also trying their best. The legislature also, they are trying, but the implementation of those things getting to the farmers, those are the people who are the down grassroots, at the corridor of politics with our people. The senator, the reps, the state house of assembly, the local government chairman, we need to come up, we need to warm up. We need to build on what the Mr. President is building right now. We need to come out with strategies. A lot of strategies need to come out in this, in this area. On which, in the manner of, we, Hima Youth Farmer Association, 
not only Hima Youth Farmer Association, all the association who has been driving agriculture in Nigeria, in agriculture sector, all of them, we need to know what are your capacity. What are your capacity with the rural people? What are your capacity with the real farmers? Not somebody who will get the items and sell the items, and later he will go to the real farmer that you are supposed to give those items, and you go and buy those crocs from there. No, we don't need those people again. We don't need those kind of system again. The system we need, it is a system who is associated with the real farmer, with the grassroots farmers. When you go to the locality, you find the one who is associated with them. When you go to the, lo to the locality, even when you go there, let us know if you, if you see like 10 or 20 farmers on field working. There must be, at, out of that 50, out of 100% of these 10 people, you, you will see like 60% of them will tell you who is the real association, who is associated with the real farmer in our locality here. You will see it. So if you don't have associate with the with the local people, then there is no need of saying they are giving you those items. And even you as an association, if you have hundred farmers, we you should also we should make sure that you have no less than fifty hectare of land by yourself to engage those farmers on it. Apart from the land those farmers have, you too you should also have like fifty hectare that you can show up. You will showcase what you are doing. You practice your, your, what, you are, what, you are, what you are asking the farmer to do. You want to train farmer. How do you go into training where you don't even have the knowledge of what you are doing? You must have the knowledge before you can train the farmers. So the farmers in the local area will identify who are those people. Who are those people going to the grassroots, going to the farmer? We go into their farmland, into their farm to capture them. To do their KYC, to do to, to, to make sure that yes, this person, even tomorrow, if I didn't see this person, I know road to his farm. I will go and check what he's doing in that farm. Because we know farm has season. I will go and check what you are doing there. For somebody within the city center who cannot from here to Maraba here is a very, very difficult for him to go. Who, can, who cannot remove in shoe, who cannot remove in cap to walk in the sun, and you are asking that person to go and monitor farm, to go and monitor farmers, how is it going to, how is, is that will be possible? That will never be possible. It is somebody who has the passion for the work. It is somebody who knows about the job. It is somebody who is ready to do the job. Who are those people ready to do the job? It is the people who has the local farmers in the local area. I cannot farm rice within this your office here. I can even means that it's all over everywhere that you can do it everywhere. I cannot do it within your office here. I must go to where it is available for me to when I continue when I go on in the production, I know that I'm going to get a very good reach of production from that side. I will not just carry my seed here now and throw it on, the, on, 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 your, on, your, on your sink here and I'm expecting result. Where is the result coming for? The result can never come to me. I must go to where I, I when I put the seed on ground, the, definitely there must be a good result coming out from there. So if there is problem, maybe disaster or anything come, we know that that one is, a, is, a, is, a, is, a, is a something that we can also iron out within ourselves at the end of the day. But without not you to identify who are the real farmers, we cannot get, we will not get it right. It will still continue like this and continue like this. Former President Muhammadu Buhari has tried his best, just like the way this one is going high, he has been trying impossible to make sure that farmers get the right seed, they get the right input at the right time to work at the right time. This one is doing it seriously. President Bola Ahmed Tinubu has his tried seriously on, 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 on how we can be able to go out of this um, uh, cost of food in the market. He give money to the governor. He give money to several people to make sure that they try as much as possible to bring down the cost of food in the market. But still, you still have to go back to the real farmer who has do those real farmers. But now, in this particular case, uh, one major issue that has been raising over time is the issue of security. How are you guys faring now compared to before? Is it better? Alhamdulillah, you see, the issue of security, it has been there. 
Not just today, not just yesterday, not just this government, not just this past government. It, it can only take different dimension to come. It has been there. But still, we are still sustained and succeeded. Let us, I mean, if you will have, if you will have, in Niger now, I can tell you that you can get up to one million, or let's even say, let's even say 500,000 hectares of Fadama. Let us only, out of 500, 200, it is no good area. If we will cultivate that 300, we will get what we want in that 300. That 300 alone is, is, is enough for us. The people that are the, the bandits, the kidnappers, and so on, they are not in everywhere. Are they in everywhere? They can never can, can they, can they over, can they overcome every one of us. It is not possible. There are some areas that we know those area is no going area. We, we don't go to those, those areas because we know there's problem there. There are some areas we know that, yes, this way we can manage ourselves, including even the people that they are saying there's no security there. We still know how we can be able to manage ourselves. This issue of insecurity, you are saying, my brother, it is not an issue of saying maybe it's just, it's just it, today did it just come? No, 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 no. The issue of insecurity, there's no food on your table, you can do anything. Somebody that is hungry is an anger man. That is another thing. Somebody who has been looking for a job for a while, for a long time, he didn't see a job. You, you manage to give that person just only 50,000 naira. And the person you ask him to go and destroy this, and he know that when he destroy this, the 50,000 naira become in his own. He will go and do it. But let us assume that same person, you engage that person in one particular, like, found issue. You engage him. He know that, yes, he can see the three square me from this place, and he still has a lot of money to take care of himself, in family, in friends, and others. My brother, when you go to that person, you ask him to come and do evil thing, he will take that issue to police, to security agent. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Ahmed Yusuf, um, the president, national president of the IMA um, Youth Association of Farmers. And um, it's nice having you today, and um, you stated it very clearly, um, that when you get the youth engaged, the issue of um, insecurity will definitely reduce. Yes. And that will also give rise to an improved um, or a fair price of this agricultural yes. produce. So, um, this is how far we can go today with you. And definitely, one of these days, we'll definitely invite you more to come and tell us more about um, the activities when the rain has fully established itself in the farm, how the farmers are coping, and how will they be able to manage the issue of flooding, which has always been um, a yearly issue. My name is Isanu. This is how far we can go today on the afternoon edition, discussing with the national uh, president of the IMA Youth Association of Nigerian Farmers. <laughs>